I have here uh, Dr. Saviot, and he was in the medical tent during the Boston Marathon yesterday. And I just wanted to ask, how, how did it go? How was the marathon? How were the injuries there? It was good. Uh, weather was interesting. So it was wet to start, and then mm -hmm. it got a little warm. So we saw a few more blisters than we expected. Saw a lot of blister stuff, a lot of tendonitis, some people that ran through plantar fasciitis and paid the price for that. Um, I got to work in the elite medical tent, so that was really cool. I so they have, they have uh, elite runners and non-elite runners? Yeah, so they have sort of a, a VIP area for the elite runners. I got to reconnect with a, a buddy from Worcester, Tim mm -hmm. Ritchie. I saw him in the elite medical tent there at the end. Cool. Everybody goes through it. So it's not like there was injuries abounding. Mm -hmm. And I uh, got to treat a guy who was a 207 marathoner, which is very, very, 207? very fast. Yeah, wow. it was very cool. What, in, what uh, you probably I don't say the person's name, but what was the problem? Was it a blister? He actually it? just had a blister to, uh, okay. at the end of the day. So even the real blister. elite people have blisters. Yeah. Yep, even the elite guys get blisters. I think they just can find a different way to get through it most of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, saw last year's both male and female champ Yuki Kawuchi and Des Linden. They were both wow. hanging out. Mm -hmm. that, so that was cool. It's just a cool experience to get to see the VIPs, the yeah. super elite folks, but then also. I went to the regular medical tent afterwards. And that was really fun. So let's talk about uh, people that are running. How can first talk can they avoid blisters? And if they get blisters, what do they do? Yeah, it's one of those things. A lot of people in the, the VIPs is really nothing they can do. They're they're doing it as a career. Mm -hmm. So they're it's part of the hazards of the job, I guess. Mm -hmm. They're gonna uh, get blisters. And then mm -hmm. the the regular folks, most commonly, they did something different. Every almost everybody who I treated, I was like, well, they, different shoe, different they changed, sock. they bought a new shoe at the expo, or they said, oh, you know what, my buddy told me he doesn't wear socks when he races, so they stop wearing socks, and mm -hmm. then they they show up there on race day and they end up with a huge blister because they did something different. Pop the blister, don't pop the blister. Depends if it's tense and painful and you need some kind of relief, then we sterilely pop it. Just mm -hmm. make a usually come in from the side and just milk it out. You just poke a hole in it and milk it and out. Leave the covering. Leave the covering, mm -hmm. yep, because that want you want to protect that dermal layer underneath. Mm -hmm. um, if it's not all that painful and you can limp away on it, usually the fluid in there will resorb after a couple of days. So it's kind of a, a judgment call based on how big the blister is and how uncomfortable it is as well. Okay. Any other uh, big issues that happened? Any broken bones, stress fractures, you know, I had, things like that? I had a couple folks that I was suspicious of some kind of stress fracture, but mm -hmm. usually they have the clinical history that went along with it. They ramped up their mileage a little aggressively to make sure they hit their milestone runs to mm -hmm. make sure they got to that 20 miler. And they, I don't have a, didn't have my, my fancy instruments there to, to it's sort of just like triage stuff. So, okay. um, you know, they're positive calcaneal squeeze test. And that makes me think of maybe a heel stress fracture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, some people, it's hard, it's hard to really know on the sideline there, right at the finish, if it's just a bruise or whatever yeah. it may be, uh -huh. uh, or if it's a, um, or if it's a true injury, like yeah. a stress fracture. Yeah. Um, and so, Everyone you saw, did they finish the race and then you treated them? Or were a lot of people had to stop midway or after a For few the miles? most part, everybody we saw had finished and then we, we treat them at the finish line. They have a sweep team that if somebody drops out, they get scooped up along okay. the course and then shuttled to the medical yeah. area at the end. Were you doing just, okay, because we do feet. Who, who does the IV stuff and all the There's other There's a hydration? whole team of, uh, of docs and physical therapists, mm -hmm. massage therapists, athletic trainers, sports psychs, family medicine docs, oh, so IV here. nurses. So there's everybody there. It's Boston EMS. So it's a big team and usually they work in little contained units and there's a podiatry exclusive section, but we're also spread out and plunked down in different areas to help with foot and ankle stuff as things come up. Great. Well, thank you, Dr. Savvy. Great yeah. experience. This is year six for me. Year so six. This is good. Good. Yeah, and if fun. anyone has injuries, uh, come on into the office at Central Mass Podiatry. We'll, we'll help you out or let us know. Thanks. Have a good one.